Okay, so we are still on the verse number two, chapter number three. So we will chant it again. Please unmute yourself. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha. Shetragnyam Chapi Mam Vidhi. Shetragnyam Chapi Mam Vidhi. Arvakshetre Shubharata. Okay, so in the last class we saw that Shankara said that uh, in view of the fact that the Jivatma is the same as the Paramatma, it is not possible for samsara to touch him in any way. Right. And again, we talked about Nitya Muktihi, which has nothing to do with the mind. Okay, there is a very common concept we said that people think that first you need to get Jnanam and then you need to work on your mind. So that you can have a perfect mind and that is moksha. So that is not what is said in the scriptures. Scripture talks about Nitya Mukta and Jivan Mukta. So when I say I am Jivan Mukta, I am saying that, okay, my mind is still needs to be improved. And therefore I will now work on improving the mind. But if you are clear about what moksha is, you will say that, okay, my mind is not connected to moksha status at all. And while it is okay to go around improving the mind, doing mental exercises, doing samadhi practice and all that, it has nothing to do with the fact that I am a moksha purushaha. Why? Because the superimposed attributes of any anatma, including the mind, can in no way affect, and we say very clearly, the superimposition or the superimposed attributes of anatma will not touch the atma either positively or negatively. And we give the example of the uh, mirage water on the desert. We said the mirage water does not make the sand wet or dry. Right. Therefore, once having understood that I am Nitya Muktaha, I should not look at whether my mind is disturbed or not. Whether my mind is superior or inferior, in no way touches me the Atma. And therefore, I should never say that I will get Jnanam and then I have to work on my mind and make it into a, a pliable instrument and then only Moksha will come. This much we saw in the last class. And now, Shankara here introduces one more Purva Pakshi. So that Purva Pakshi, he says that, O oh Vedantin, you are saying that the attributes of the Anatma is transferred to Jivatma. Right? That means the problems of the 
mind the the mind is anatma anatma always suffers from samsara therefore the samsara which belongs to the sukshma shariram that samsara i am transferring to jivatma and this jivatma has agnyanam he does not know that he is paramatma therefore it seems to me that he has samsara right on the other hand <coughs> paramatma has full gnanam and therefore paramatma is free from samsara so what are you saying the jivatma is agnyani because he is not god gnanam and he is suffering from samsara paramatma is gnani and therefore he has no samsara so on one hand there is a gnani on the other hand there is agnyani so gnanam and agnyanam they are opposing dharma they are opposing attributes how can there ever be equation between them how can you say that opposing things have got aikyam right because you can never say that heat and cold can have aikyam fire and ice can never have aikyam and it is similar darkness and light can never have aikyam and therefore how can you say that this gnani and agnani this gnani jivatma and the sorry gnani paramatma and the agnani jivatma they are got aikyam how can you say because they are also having opposing attributes <clears throat> what is the simple answer we should know by now we are all advanced students what is the simple answer to this objection that agnani and agnani can never have aikyam because one is gnani and one is agnani both are opposing attributes what is simple answer in both the cases uh, to... they are considering aram but we are considering osi it, it is only a uh, seeming uh, inequality uh, uh, co covered by covered by agnanam that inequality is okay because of the coverage of agnan covered by agnan right so basically that is the correct word so to make it into better, clearer language we are saying that the agnanam is adhyastha superimposed upon the jivatma right and once the adhyasa is removed through gnanam see when the agnanam is superimposed upon the jivatma the attribute of the agnanam which is samsara is also is superimposed upon jivatma and therefore since it's a adhyasa what is the solution we have to remove the adhyasa adhyasa is because of agnanam and therefore gnanam will remove the adhyasa and at that point of time jivatma will also have gnanam paramatma will also have gnanam there is therefore no barrier to saying that paramatma is equal to jivan this is a simple solution which we all know simple answer shankara however gives a very very detailed and very beautiful answer he says o puro pakshi you say that jivatma is associated with ignorance with agnana he says hey puro pakshi that view itself is wrong you cannot say that jivatma has got agnana and therefore he says what is the first question that we should ask first question is what is avidya if i say what is avidya what will be your answer this is shankara's question what is avidya what is the answer nitya nitya vastu aviveka okay you give a simple answer without going to talk about that and all that i am the body i am the mind what is impermanent vidya is ignorance that i am atma you are all going back Anything. to basic that what is avidya without coming to atma what exactly is meant by ignorance if i say that you have ignorance of how to make a dosha what does it mean lack of knowledge lack of knowledge right so simple answer is 
for avidya is avidya is absence of vidya you agree yes 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 the simple answer is avidya is absence of vidya avidya means ab ignorance means absence of knowledge but shankara says no that is not also avidya shankara gives a very beautiful de definition he is avidya is vidya pratibandha that which obstructs vidya that is called avidya avidya is that because of which i do not get the benefit of vidya vidya is there in me but i don't get the benefit of vidya because of avid that is avidya right for example when you say that the mirror is dirty why is it that your face you cannot see it is not because of absence of mirror you have to clean the pratibandha the obstruction the dirt which is has the effect of not making you see the mirror right okay why is this uh, what i call argument very interesting in the case of the mirror the obstruction to your seeing your face is the dirt right now shankara says tell me where is the dirt what is the locus for the dirt in the mana body mind i am talking about the mirror you cannot mirror see the face because mirror. of the dirt where is the dirt yeah. locus yeah. on the mirror on the surface on the, on the surface of the mirror right okay because of that dirt on the surface of the mirror you are not able to see your face had the dirt been on your face you would have seen what you would have seen a face which is dirty had the dirt been on your hand you would have still seen your face so what shankara is saying is that it's a very subtle idea that for vidya to be obstructed avidya must be located in the same locus as the location of vidya are you following the argument for the face to be obstructed Yes. by dirt that dirt has to be located on the locus where the face will be seen similarly for if vidya knowledge has to be obstructed by avidya the avidya must be located in the same same locus where the vidya is located in the mind only right what is the location of any vidya it is a relative pramana correct now for example i'll explain a little bit more supposing you have you are not able to see properly you suspect cataract right what is the locus of sight your eye what is the locus of the cataract your eye lens so when you go to the ophthalmologist he does not mri you he just checks your eye therefore the question the point being made is that whichever indriya is the locus for a particular pramanam that is the same locus for agnyanam also so in respect of atma where is the knowledge located in the mind mana mind in the mind in the antakarana therefore shankara says obviously where should the obstruction avidya be located in the mind only in the mind only. Okay. therefore how are you saying that avidya is located on the jivatma you see that it's a very very detailed argument very subtle argument the obstruction avidya which obstructs vidya has to be located 
in the same locus as the vidya the vidya is located in the antakaranam not the jivatma therefore the locus also must be located in the therefore the obstruction also avidya must be located in the antakaranam antakaranam is not jivatma Different argument. It's a very beautiful argument. If you have, you have to understand properly the flow, then so then Shankara says that this Atma Avidya in the Antakarnam is in the form of three thoughts three pratyaya pratyaya means thoughts and these three thoughts cover atma okay see the flow of the argument it is beautiful it is the avidya the atma avidya which is located in the mind which is covering the knowledge of atma which is there in the mind right what is the knowledge of atma not i am atma that knowledge is there in the mind but this avidya which is located in the mind is covering that and shankara says this avidya has is in the form of three thoughts three pratyaya pratyaya means thoughts and what are these thoughts the first one is agrahana pratyaya second one is samshaya grahana pratyaya third one is viparita grahana pratyaya so technical names which he has used i am also using them agrahana pratyaya samshaya grahana pratyaya viparita grahana pratyaya these are three thoughts and shankara says these are three tamasic thoughts right he says tamasic because tamas represents darkness coverage veiling and therefore these three tamasic thoughts are that which cover the atma vidya now let's look at this individually agrahana pratyaya literally grahanam means what except grasping 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 holding agrahanam means not grasping so here it means agrahana pratyaya is i don't know what is atma or what is brahman right very careful the words are i don't know what is brahman or what is atma this is agrahana pratyaya what is the solution for this no jnana jnan no you are uh, shravanam i think don't shravanam exactly you have to be very specific when you don't know somebody has to tell you and that therefore that is being done by shravanam so agrahana pratyaya i don't know thought is remedied by doing shravanam then he says samshaya grahana pratyaya so there is something which is doubtful my teacher keeps telling me that i am brahman but i my mind says well i may be or i may not be or i am not very sure about it what is the solution mananam mananam okay so the first pratyaya agrahana pratyaya i don't know what is brahman that is remedied through shravanam i don't know if i am brahman or not that is the second see they are very carefully you know separated these ideas first one is i don't know what is brahman or what is atma second one is my teacher tells me the veda tells me that i am brahman or atma but i am not sure of that fact and therefore it is no no because in the second one shravanam has been completed therefore i know what is atma what i am not sure is whether i am atma or not okay third one is viparita grahana pratyaya viparita grahana pratyaya this is different this is viparita grahana means understanding wrongly right so i am not brahma that is my thought over here as a some misconception all these three put together is called avidya and this avidya obstructs what 
Aham Brahma Asmi. That thought, it obstructs. Now what we should know is, all these, all these three are what? Pratyaya only, thoughts only. And therefore, they are located in the mind. And therefore, Shankara is saying that, Shastra is not trying to improve the Jeevatma. Shastra is trying to address the Jeevatma's mind. You get the difference? Mm. Shastra cannot convert Jeevatma into Paramatma. He doesn't need the conversion. Jeevatma is already Paramatma. The idea that I am not the Paramatma is located in the Jeevatma's mind. And therefore, Shastra needs to address the Jeevatma's mind, not the Jeevatma. You cannot improve Jeevatma because he is Paramatma. Jeevatma's mind has a misconception and that is, it can be addressed. Right. The first answer, first argument. Is it clear so far? Any questions at all? It's a very, very important argument meant for your own manana. Oh, my Chattaji. Yeah. Okay, so, the solution for the Parita Grahana Pratyaya. That yeah, we'll come to that. Yeah. Right now, we are on the first one. Solution for Parita Grahana Pratyaya is the I am not Brahman. It's a clear idea that I am not Brahman. So, you have to go back to origin. See, here, this can come out of the idea that I have not understood. It can come out of the idea that I don't believe. Do uh, you agree? If when your teacher tells you that you are Brahman, there are two ways of understanding. One is, okay, I am Brahman, but I am not very sure. The other one is, no, 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 I am not Brahman. What is the difference between the two? <laughs> John. Um, that there is a doubt. There is a doubt. Let John answer. One is the lack of knowledge, the other one is the doubt. I address the question to John. Let him answer. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so the difference is that um, in one, I have very, very strong preconceptions that doesn't allow me to understand that I am Brahman. So I'm firmly in the position that I am not Brahman. And the second in the second option is that I understood what is Brahman, but I'm not sure about it. I will put it another way. In the second part of it, where you say that I know that Shastra tells me I am Brahman, but I am not very sure. And the first part you can reword as I don't believe Shastra when it tells me that I am Brahman. Mm -hmm. What is the difference? The difference is in one, I regard Shastra as a Pramanam. In the other one, I don't regard Shastra as Pramanam. If you doubt Shastra as Pramanam, then the whole discussion becomes irrelevant for you because you are a Nastika, you are an atheist. Okay. You have to first have faith in the Shastra. If you don't have Faith in the Pramana, if you are not an Astika, then there is no point coming to Shastram at all. Because there is no logical proof for the fact that you are Brahman. Or for the fact that Brahman exists. The only place you can get that knowledge is Shastram. So, for the Parita Grahana Pratyaya, that is wrong understanding. It has... It could have two solutions depending on what which one is the cause of this pratyaya. Correct. If you don't take Shastra Pramanam, then that there is no solution for you. When you are an atheist, you walk out of the thing and say that no, 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 I don't believe all this. If you think I have Shastra has, has told me what I am, then you do man. Mm. Right. So therefore, this is the argument. Now, Shastra Shankara gives another argument again. And this is a very nice. He says, Is ignorance known or unknown? What is the answer? Is avidya known or unknown?
what would you say is the answer? Avidya, it's, it's known. So we I got two unknown. answers. One is known, one is unknown. Which is the right answer? It's known. Can you give an example? Because we, we, when we, but it's referring to the example of the mirror, we know there is the dust in the mirror, so we clean it. I give you another. Uh, like, I don't know Japanese. That is Japanese avidya is there. Do I know that I have Japanese avidya? Yes. Yes. So avidya is known. Mm. Right. Known. We use another word. Experienced. And therefore, my Japanese avidya is experienced. We have the basic Vedantic law. Anything which is experienced cannot belong to the experiencer. Who knows the knows the fact that I have Japanese avidya? I know the fact. Right? I, the Atma, know the fact. And therefore, avidya is experienced. An experienced avidya can never belong to the experiencer, which is Atma. This is the second argument. Okay, so the first one was what? That these are three thoughts which cover the Atma, Atma Jnana. The second one is that somebody is unmuting themselves. Please don't do that. Please don't unmute yourself unless necessary. Then when you're about to talk, otherwise keep yourself muted because it will come in the recording. And people will get disturbed, okay? So let me just finish this, then we'll take questions. So the second argument is that avidya is experienced and therefore avidya cannot belong to atma, me, the experiencer. Then Shankara has a third argument. He says atma is eternal and therefore nirvikaraha, not changing. Everything that is in the nature of atma, sat, chit, ananda, these are all eternally present in Atma. If avidya is present in Atma, you have to go by the first statement. Everything that is present in Atma, every quality, every attribute, every description of Atma is in the nature of eternal only, nityam only. Therefore, satchit, birthlessness, deathlessness, nirvikaratvam, the non-changing aspect, these are all eternally present in Atma. Supposing avidya is present in Atma, that must also be eternal. And therefore, if avidya is eternal, what is the main problem? Where is moksha? Where is the where is removal no of the... At all. Hmm. Moksha, anir moksha prasanga will arise. The possibility of moksha not being a, not being a possibility at all. And therefore, because moksha is very much there, the idea that avidya is present in atma is wrong. So avidya must be subject to destruction. Whatever is subject to destruction can never belong to atma. So far he has given three arguments. He gives one more argument. He says, atma is asangaha. Sastram says, atma is asangaha. What does asangaha mean? not associated with anything. And therefore, how can Atma be associated with Avidya? And because of these four arguments, what are the four arguments? One is that there is a there are three types of thoughts which are covering the Atma Vidya. Second is that Avidya is known. Therefore, does not belong to Atman, cannot belong to experiencer. Third is that Avidya cannot belong to Atma because everything belonging to Atma is eternal. And if Avidya belong to Atma, then Avidya will also be eternal and there will be no possibility of Moksha. And the fourth argument is that Atma is Asangaha. Therefore, there is no question of Atma being associated with Avidya. And because of these four arguments, Shankara says that avidya belongs to the mind, not to jivan. 
Any questions so far? It's a very important idea being presented here that all problems belong to the mind alone, never to the Atma. Okay, fine. Now, a Pura Pakshi comes, an opponent comes. He says, Jivatma is called Shetragnya. Right? What is Shetragnya? What does Shetragnya mean? The who, who knows what is Shetra. The, the one knower. who knows the Shetra, which means the experiencer of the Shetra. Now you say that Shetram has samsara. You accept Shetram, the world has samsara. And if that world which has got samsara is, is being experienced by Shetragnyaha, is that Shetragnyaha not the experiencer of samsara also? Because the one who knows something else is definitely the knower of that thing. And the, therefore, the Shetragnyaha, who is the experiencer of Shetram, which is a, you know, web, which, which is a very storehouse of samsara, is necessarily the experiencer of samsara. Right? He says that. Because you can get disturbed by something which you are experiencing, which is not yours. You know, for example, let us say that, you are a, you are a hospital nurse and somebody is screaming with pain in front of you can you close your eyes and say okay om namah shivaya i'm going to meditate on nirguna brahman you are experiencing the pain of the person in front of you and therefore this purushi says that shetragnya has got a connection with the problems of the shetra because he is experiencing that. However, the second statement is that Paramatma does not have that. Because you are saying that Paramatma is asamsari. He does not have these problems. And therefore, you have a Shetragnya here who is experiencing the samsara of, some, of the world. And you have a Paramatma who does not have that experience at all. Therefore, they are different. There is no question of Jivatma, Paramatma, Aikyam. Are you able to see what is the argument? It's a very, very important argument. It brings in the concept of what is a sakshi. I need to know from you whether you are following the flow of the discussion. No, no, sir. Then say that. Can you repeat, uh, please? Yeah, thank you. I am saying that this Pura Pakshi. He is saying that, okay, let's put it this way. There are two people. I am there sitting in my air-conditioned room here in Ahmedabad. And let us say, Ambarish is there also in Ahmedabad. But he is sitting, he is a good person, so he is doing Samad Seva. He is in a hospital. And there is a person who is in deep pain. And Amber is trying to alleviate that pain by comforting that person. But that person is screaming. Does it disturb Ambarish or not? Ambarish, will it disturb you? Yes, yes. It will disturb me. It will disturb you. But I am sitting far away. I am not <clears throat> experiencing that person who is screaming. Therefore, I am not disturbed. So, this is the uh, this is the analogy. The Shetragnya is the person who is sitting in front of the screaming person. And the Paramatma is the person who is away from that and they were not experiencing that pain. One is experiencing and one is not experiencing. Where is the question of Jivatma, Paramatma, Aikya? How can you say yes. they are the same? Got it now, sir. With the example, it's clear. Everybody got it? The whole idea, the whole argument? Okay. Yes. Now, let's see. 
when we make a statement which we make in uh, shastra very often jivatma is sakshi the experiencer what is involved in that word sakshi witness he, he is just an observer from, what are the components of the sakshi the oc yes OC and RM. Yes. OC and RM. And? RC and RM. The three things are there. OC, RM, and RC. And RC, yeah. Yes. Right. You cannot yes. say that RC is not there. The moment you say OC and RM are there, RC is formed immediately. Yes. And therefore, when you say Jeevatma is Akshi, that Sakshi has three components, RM, RC, OC. And therefore, this Sakshitvam, the, the status of being a Sakshi, the status of being an experiencer, that you will find has to be said to be pervading all the three, RM, RC and OC. They have to pervade, pervade all the three. When you say that RC is a witness, is a seer, Trishta. In that RC, are you including the RM? No. Yes. If it is a Drishta, then... Oh, uh, you have yes. to include the RM. Without the RM, there is no yes. RC, remember. So when you say Jeevatma is Drishta, is a seer, you are saying RM and RC is the seer. The word I am using very, very, uh, you know, definitively is drishta. Very deliberately, I am using the word drishta seer. Because the RM and RC, remember when he sees, RM is what? Anatma. Anatma is always changing. So let's put it here. RM here is the mind, right? You are looking at a person who is screaming. We are talking about Ambarish is when that Ambarish looking at the, you know, screaming person in the hospital. What is the RM there? On the mind. The body can't change. Ambarish's mind is the RM. Does the mind change or not change? It changes. Constantly changes. Therefore, when he is seeing the person screaming, the disturbance is are in the mind. Mind. The disturbance of the mind are reflected in the OC, which is reflected in the mind, which we call the RC. The disturbance of the mind is projected onto the RC. And therefore, it is the changing mind which is seeing that person suffering. So, it is a Savikara Dishta. The witness who is changing. The witness mind, which is changing, is the RMRC, he is the seer. When you say RMRC Adrishta, you are talking about the changing seer. But when you say OC is Drishta, you are changing, talking about a changeless seer, Nirvikara Drishta. So in this Jivatma who is Sakshi, there are three components. And when we talk about drishta, seer, and when we are talking about the changing drishta, we are talking about the RM and the RC. When we are talking about the unchanging drishta, the nirvikara drishta, we are talking about the OC. Why is the OC called the drishta? Because Without it was actually the... You cannot be the... You cannot have any... Without the because OC, there can be no RC. Nothing can be. Yeah. Right. And therefore, OC is Nirvyakara Drishta. Whenever you say the, use the word Sakshi, remember you are talking about this Nirvikara Drishta. So, there is an OC in your mind. Right? The OC pervades your mind. Rather than say OC is in the mind, OC is also in the mind. But the OC outside you, because OC is all-pervading. 
the OC outside you, you cannot recognize. The OC in the mind, you can recognize using the RC. Because the RC is there in the mind, that is the only reason you can understand that OC is also there. That OC in the mind, that Atma in the mind, which is the reason why your mind is functioning as the RC, that Atma is called Sakshi. That is a Nirvikara Drishta. Changeless here. That changeless seeing is not entity which enables this thing is called the Sakshi. Are you able to understand? That is Paramatma. That is not different from Paramatma. But you are able to actually understand that that Paramatma is in me because it is because of that Paramatma that your mind is functional. Are you getting the difference? There is a Savikara Drishta, changing seer, which yeah. is the mind. There is a changeless seer, which is a reason why the mind can see. That changeless seer. Yes. And therefore, Shankara defines here, Shetragnya is this Nirvikara Drishta, the Sakshi, he is Nirvikara. So, he is not affected by the problems of the Shetra. So, Ambarish, when he is seeing that man in pain, Ambarish's mind is definitely disturbed. Ambarish's mind is Savikara Drishta. But the Atma, which Ambarish is really, really Ambarish is not the mind, he is the Atma. That Atma, which is the cause of the mind being able to understand the pain of somebody else, that Atma is not disturbed by the pain. That Atma is the Sakshi, that Atma Ambarish can recognize in his own mind, this is the reason why my mind is functional. Are we clear on that? So, Drishta is the one who is actually seeing it. Don't, don't use such words. Drishta is the RM plus RC. Okay. Akshi is OC. Unless you learn to use correct words, your thinking will always be unclear. So, when we are speaking of Sakshi, we always have to take it as Nirvikara Sakshi only. But then there is something known as uh, Savikara Sakshi, which is the RC. Is that correct? Don't use the word Sakshi for that. Use the word Drishta for that. Sakshi is purely used in context with non-changing. Okay. It's a very, very beautiful argument. It makes a lot of things clear. That's why this, you know, this uh, third, second mantra, we have spent, this is the third class, right? We have spent... So, three. Acharya Ji, Sakshi is Mithya all the, all the right? Isn't that Sakshi true? is not Mithya. Sakshi is no. Nirvakara. It, it is the Atma. It is the Atma. The Drishta is Mithya. Okay. So I'll ask you one more question. If Drishta, this Akshi is Nirvikara, why do you call it Sakshi? Because Sakshi means one who sees. Seeing is a verb. It's an action. And for this, I will give the same argument, which we talked about a little bit earlier. When sunlight reveals the contents of the world, of the, of the place outside your window, do you say that some action is done by sunlight? You say sunlight reveals. Reveals <coughs> is a verb. But sunlight doesn't do any action. What is the answer? It is the nature of sunlight to reveal whatever comes in its range. Similarly, it is the nature of Sakshi to reveal whatever comes within its range. Can we say Sannidhi Matrena? Can we use those Sanidhi words? Sannidhi Matrena, correct. Sannidhi Matrena is the correct word. Uh, uh, will you please repeat the last one? Uh, when 
I look out of the window and the early morning sun comes up. Right? I say, okay, sun has come up. It is revealing to me the trees outside. The word revealing is a verb. Verb implies karta. But sunlight is actionless. It has not done anything to you. What has happened? It is the nature of light to make known, to reveal whatever comes within its range. That is all that has happened. And that thing, because it is revealed, because of the nature of sunlight, no action has been done. We say sunlight has revealed. The word revealed has to be understood as manifested. Something has happened because it is the nature of something else. And, and, and then that uh, analogy extended to this uh, vidya or uh, jnanam or uh, how how it was equated or uh, that analogy if it's is it no, the jnanam like analogy it? is that jnanam uh, is the understanding that I was always Brahma. It is a revelation of the fact that my idea that I was not Brahman, that is wrong. Okay. So, Jnanam just makes you understand that what you were thinking earlier was incorrect. Okay. Now, the fin final part of this, uh, we'll try to finish this verse today. The final part of it is that Shankara says, okay, fine. The There is a question. In view of all that we are saying, is karma kanda relevant or not? To a jnani or not? And now here comes a very important definition. So, Shankara says that jnanis, uh, human beings are divided into three groups. So, this again you may not see anywhere else. So, this discussion is important. Human beings are divided into three groups. Dehatma vadi, Jivatma Vadi, Brahmatma Vadi. Vadi means people who say. So, Dehatma Vadi is a person who says that I am only the body. Deha Atma Vadi. Atma means I am. Dehatma means I am. Vadi is, that is his philosophy. Dehatma Vadi is therefore an atheist who does not believe in Veda, who does not believe in any punyam papam who does not believe in jivatma, he does not believe in going to higher loka, lower loka, nothing. He does not accept shastram at all. And therefore, for him, karma kanda has absolutely no relevance. Okay. Who is a jivatma vadi? Jivatma vadi is a person who says, I am a jiva. Jiva atma. I am a jiva. How does he say that? Because he has studied. Karmakanda, he knows there is a Jeevatma. Karmakanda has told him there is a Jeevatma. How does it Karmakanda tell him there is a Jeevatma? Karmakanda says if you do all these rituals, you will go to Swarga, Naraga, etc. Therefore, if you have to avoid going to Naraka, you have to do Vaidika Karma and then you will go to Swarga. Right? For him, Karmakanda is relevant because it is giving him the fact that Vaidika Karmas will give you Punyam. With that Punyam, you can go to Swarga. Right? And also, that same Vaidika karma will give him Chitta Shuddhi and that Chitta Shuddhi will bring him to Jnana Kanda. So, for Jeevatma Vada, Vadi, the Karma Kanda is relevant. The last one is Brahmatma Vadi. So, similarly, you can understand Brahma Atma. I am Brahman is the thought that this person carries. Right? He knows that Jeevatma, I am Jeevatma is not correct. It is basically Ajnanam only. He has crossed that Jivatma barrier. He has done Vajika Karma. He has got enough Chitta Shuddhi. He has come to Jnanam. He knows I am Brahman. Therefore, Brahmatma Vadi alone is the Jnani among these three. Dehatma Vadi, Jivatma Vadi, Brahmatma Vadi. Dehatma Vadi is Nastika. So, it is the Veda is not relevant to him at all. Jivatma Vadi is Astika, but he has not come to Jnanam. For him, Purva Veda is very necessary. Karma Kanda is very necessary. 
for the brahmatvadi he has crossed karma kanda for him karma kanda is not relevant because he claims i am akarta i am abhokta when i am akarta i have no rituals to perform therefore karma is not relevant to me at all and therefore here tankara makes his favorite statement jnana karma samuchchaya the combination of vaidika karma and jnanam is not possible for a jnani because if you have to do vaidika karma you have to have the attitude that i am a karta and the jnani knows i am a karta therefore jnana karma samuchchaya is not possible for a jnani so with this he ends his discussion on this particular uh, verse yes. i have given you only the extracts there's a, a very beautiful you know bashyam uh, which we are not going into because most of us all of us don't know sanskrit so we don't know. but this is the extract i hope you have enjoyed the three classes yes acharya definitely thank you acharya need some manam mananam again and again yes. right. sir but the, we, we, the yeah. brahmatma sorry sir yeah, yeah, the brahmatma vadi yet does uh, karma kanda for loka sangraha yes but he does not have the attitude huh. that i am karta of a karta huh. yeah yes See, remember, I am karta no, means you are doing the karma for a benefit for you. When you say loka sangraha means yes. you have renounced the benefits yes. of the karma for yourself. Yeah. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha. Sarve bhavantu sukhinaha. One can only marvel at the intellectual and spiritual level. Millions of sangraha, no? Absolutely. Yes. The yes. more you study the pashyams, the, you know, you are an awe of that person sir i hope my prarabdha is there for the brahma sutras with you i hope my then. prarabdha will be there <laughs> <with you. laughs> anyway for this thank you for your patience om purnamada purnamidam purnat purnamudachyate purnasya purnamadaya purnam meva vajashyate om shanti 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 om tat sat om namah shivaya thank you for your patience thank you so much